so it's a case of adenocarcinoma and the location of the tumor was in the uh, ileocecal junction and the descending column and in the, for which we did a total hemicolectomy total colectomy with uh, uh, removal of the peritoneal peritoneum so sir, a total abdominal colectomy with cytoreactive surgery and uh, hypothermic interperitoneal chemotherapy was given followed by alurectal anastomosis and a defunctioning proximal ileostomy was made sir. So this is a, a patient who had initially presented with right side hydroureteronephrosis which was uh, diagnosed on CT as a tumor that is compressing the right ureter and the tumor was present at the uh, ascending colon. Upon colonoscopy, there was a synchronous lesion in the descending colon as well. Biopsy proven both were adenocarcinoma, sir. On PET CT, there were multiple peritoneal deposits as well. Patient was uh, discussed in the tumor board and a decision for a new adjuvant primary chemotherapy was made. After six cycles of uh, completing the chemotherapy, patient was taken up for surgery. And uh, now the post-operative report was as stated by a doctor was that uh, there was a tumor at the IC junction as well as in the descending colon and there was minimal tumor regression sir. Now they mentioned as per CAP protocol. What is CAP protocol? Some classification A is for Americans and pathologists. So this is a classification by American Pathology Association which is not applicable for biopsy specimen or metastatic cancer but in this case if you really look at it it's a <coughs> it was an m1 disease now we know there is m1a and m1b what is the a and b so yeah. m1a would be related to liver or lungs resectable one organ disease and further on read about it so since the patient had a metastatic disease and colorectal cancer is one cancer where even palliation is surgery you don't remove the tumor, you don't get the kind of response you're looking for. So the patient was taken up for new adjuvant chemotherapy. We, we'll call it primary chemotherapy in this case because it was, a, it was a metastatic disease. And now salvage surgery. And the salvage surgery meant total colectomy with the uh, total peritonectomy with the, uh, what is called a CRS, cytoreductive surgery with HIPEC, which is heated interperitoneal chemotherapy. Now, all done, the patient is now recovered well and we are looking at a histopathology report which, you, which you, Sakura was just reading out. So in that you find it's a metastatic disease and uh, if you look at it, I was hoping it will quickly give the summary that I hear. So it's MPT4A and 2A, M not applicable, which is quite kind of dicey because now peritoneal deposits are all negative. So we are looking at... Um, at a metastatic disease with that is responded partially, not too well. There are still tumors of the same size in the, you know, the allocical junction or shall I say ascending right colon and the left colon both sides. So the best palliation is still surgery. That is what is a take home for all of you. And HIPEC works uh, by, I know, can you just hold? You, you must have seen HIPEC was done by the open technique. Uh, in the open technique, the advantage is you can you can do the anastomosis while the hypic is still going on. So that saves on time. There's a close technique also where you close the abdomen temporarily, of course, and you let the you know the temperature be controlled, pump be functioning. So it is hypic uh, that patient received. Now we're looking at the possible options. What are the possible options? You've done allorectal anastomosis with a diversion, ileostomy. And uh, now we have to again discuss the case in the tumor board. There is no case for radiation, we know that. Uh, so chemotherapy patient is already received. We need to follow up the patient with which markers now? So One is CEA and <coughs> regular imaging and following it up. That's all we can do. Doing a PET scan immediately would not be a great idea because you will get false positives. So we will wait for some time where the inflammation settles and we can go for the assessment. Now, I think some bits of the uh, surgical video may be shared and uh, that in addition to what we are discussing now would make sense in the context you mentioned about this patient actually was uh, seen by a urologist first 
uh, for uh, adrenal forces on the right side and when uh, imaging was done they found there was a mass compressing on the ureter and that was taken as an extra uh, you know neural mass but on investigation it was found to be a growth in the ileocecal junction and then the, the when colonoscopy was done the scope could not be negotiated beyond, beyond the a growth in the descending colon. So virtual colonoscopy and also the biopsy, it was found out to be adenocarcinoma. Now this is also, the grade is the same. There is some bit of desmoplastic reaction. So I think chemotherapy has done some work, but not to the degree that uh, one would look for. The best palliation is still surgery. And the best answer is also surgery. Another thing that we need to look for in most of these cases is uh, microsatellite instability and mismatched repair gene pattern as they call it so that we can plan some kind of a targeted therapy and KRAS mutation should be also assessed in view of it being a metastatic cancer so we have some um, you know it's a Pandora box that will open again for the therapy but doesn't have a very bad prognosis the patient is young I think the patient is uh, 42 years gentlemen and uh, Tumor 1, that is the one on the right side, is 2.5 into 2 into 1 centimeter up to serosa. Right, and margins are all clear. Tumor 2 is 1.2 into 1.2.6 up to muscle. So, this is not, it is confined there. So, but the peritoneal deposits were seen, we saw them during surgery. So, it is, it is a metastatic disease nevertheless, although the peritoneum doesn't show any meds now in the in the histopathology, except for the deposits. Mm -hmm. Those deposits are positive, but not the rest of the peritoneum. So it's still a confined disease, uh, likely to do well. Uh, relatively speaking, likely to do well. Patient being young, the tumor also is aggressive in these cases. I think that's how we will take it forward. So another discussion for MDT regarding the further treatment. But I, I, I guess we need to look for microsatellite instability, mismatch repair genes from now onwards. Any question? Um, um, sir, uh, so what, uh, so a DJ stand was inserted in the ureter of this patient on the right side. So, sir, when do we remove that? Well, we are planning to remove next week uh, because uh, during surgery we didn't find ureter getting compressed anywhere. It was lying very neatly away. So, it was more of a you know, the growth itself. So once the growth is out, the stent can be out now. And we are hoping that adenophosis would resolve, which is already resolved to a great degree, but that was due to stent. So stent removal is also necessary. Patient is symptomatic, having burning, urgency, etc. One or two bouts of maturity also. So we need to remove the stent. So we are planning, we wanted to give a gap of three to four weeks before we go in for second procedure, which would be an office procedure, but cystoscopy still needs some kind of uh, anesthesia. So we'll do it maybe in a couple of weeks. Uh, sir, in this patient, the open method was chosen for HIPEC. Sir, are there any advantages and disadvantages of both the methods? See, the, the obvious disadvantage of open method is dissipation of heat. So you may lose heat and body temperature may drop because you're going to give it for, for uh, rectum at 60 to 80 minutes. That's what people say. Uh, so, 60 to 80 minutes of exposure, exposed abdomen. The circulation is happening, but the temperature may not be maintained. That's one disadvantage. But the advantage is, you don't have to close and go home and come back to fix the other things. So, since the patient needed an anastomosis and also a diversion, by, with open method, the advantage is while the, the, you know, the, the therapy is on, you can do the anastomosis, you can do the diversion so that saves on time that's the way there's no other difference you need a good thompson retractor to keep the abdomen open so what we used to practice earlier was putting some loose clips on the skin closing the abdomen letting it work for a you know for the period that i mentioned and then uh, coming back and doing the procedure so naturally you take two hours to three hours extra of the operating time so that is the problem with the closed method but the advantage with the closed method is temperature is easy to maintain. But these days, it works like a, you know, almost like a bypass machine where the, it gets heated up, comes back, heated up, comes back. So there's not, not much of a problem with open method as well.
So this is the open method of high pack that is going on. The abdomen is retracted by the Thomson retractor. There are four pipes, two in the diaphragm and two at the pelvis for inlet and outlet respectively of the peritoneal fluid that is the dialysis fluid along with the chemotherapy drugs. These tubes are temperature controlled. And this is the HIPEC machine. The screen shows the temperature. The recommended temperature is 42 degrees Celsius plus minus 0.5 degrees. The two cylinders are for chemotherapy drugs. The one on the left is for mitomycin C and the one on the right for cisplatin. These are the suction pumps which will remove the drugs from the pelvis and the cylinders are for infusing the drug. These pipes along with the chemotherapy drugs mixed into the dialysis fluid are going into the abdomen under temperature control and are supported by sutures onto the Thomson retractor. The bowel after cytoreductive surgery is being bathed into the chemotherapy drugs. The third drug that is given during HIPEC is sodium thiosulfate which is given intravenously.